Now, I am extremely fortunate that I was able to secure two vials of black sperm from California Cryobank when I embarked on this part of my journey last fall. But I do know that I am an outlier. So I've got two concrete tips for single black women who think this may be an option, either now or maybe later. Welcome to Barium Babs. I'm your host, Vale Chikuni. We begin. We have Ebena Williams, okay? She just, uh, she was featured on um, People's Magazine that she is pregnant, okay? So if you know anything about uh, Ebena Williams, uh, she, she's not married, she's single, but we're going to dive uh, into it. So who is Ebony K. Williams? Ebony K. Williams is the host and executive producer of the Wanna Music Group Holding Court with Ebony K. Williams. Okay? She's famous. She's a lawyer. She's very successful. She's a uh, public speaker. She, I, I don't know if she's still doing it, but she was one of the, um, uh, the real housewives of New York. Okay? So she's been featured on, you, on People's Magazine where she is showing her bump. So she is pregnant, but everything we know, she is not married. But, uh, so the question will be, okay, so how did she get pregnant? Okay. She ended up using uh, a donation for her to get pregnant. And all this is in the magazine is public. But she was talking about this long before um, she decided to do this. Okay. So I want you to listen to her, what she said. Okay. Black women are availing ourselves to all of the options that our hard work and circumstances currently afford us. And that means that single motherhood by choice is going to be an option that more and more black women consider and even exercise. So anybody that's in their feelings about that can go ahead and start to process right now. Because black women that have the privilege to embark upon this expensive and oftentimes lengthy process will increasingly decide to forego marriages and partnerships that do not serve us and that are not in our best interests. And now that bypassing those insufficient relationships does not have to come at the expense of motherhood, well, frankly, it's a whole new world. A world in which black women are no longer subject to the desperation of being chose, because now we get to do the choosing. And as we choose, we do have to contend with the reality of a dismally small supply of black sperm. Because most black women on this journey, we want to create children that look like us and that look like our families. And that means we want black sperm. And as we heard from Reese Brooks, it's the definition of slim pickings. And sometimes that means compromising on this aspect of your journey. Now, I am extremely fortunate that I was able to secure two vials of black sperm from California Cryobank when I embarked on this part of my journey last fall. But I do know that I am an outlier. So I've got two concrete tips for single black women who think this may be an option, either now or maybe later. Number one, please check out Reproductive Village. It's a new black-owned cryobank, and it's designed to help with this shortage of black sperm. It's set to open its doors in D.C. later this year, and it will also have drop-off locations in Atlanta and Houston, Texas. And number two, be proactive. I say go ahead and start looking right now for desirable black sperm. You register with all four of the big cryobanks, and this includes California Cryobank, which I used, Seattle Sperm Bank, Fairfax Cryobank, and Zytex. Then you can scan the current options for black sperm. And if you see some sperm that you like, I suggest go ahead and buy at least two vials right now. Even if you do not intend to use them anytime soon, trust me, it's better to have them than to be without them when the time comes. And listen, if you never need them for whatever reason, what a wonderful gift to give to a friend or a sorority sister in need. And also, most of those banks, they allow you to resell the sperm back to the bank itself. Listen, I know that many are going to question or even indict the decision that I and many other black women are making to become single mothers by choice. But I, like the women you heard from today, go by the creed of no regrets. I have, and many black women have, too much love, too many resources, and too rich of a community not to share these gifts with children of our own. Children that will one day, no doubt, enrich and contribute to the next generation of black America. Yes. So... <sighs> I don't even know where to start uh, right. with this uh, with this lady, okay? Because she's thinking what she has just done over here is something that is nice, that's something uh, that is productive. No, it is not, okay? Children are a blessing from the Lord. So the idea of, okay, you know, uh, it, it's just going to be a gift, right? Like, okay, you can gift to your sister. You can do this like you're buying... Um, 
I, I don't know, like you're buying uh, car parts, okay? Like you're, bu- you're, you're picking vegetables in a grocery store. You're picking fruit in a tree. That's not how it works. So this woman, she has demonstrated that she's very selfish, okay? How many single mothers are out there struggling to raise their children because the man is not in their home for one reason or the other? So she is out here, a very beautiful woman, successful. Then she's out here saying like, oh, okay, it's, this is my choice. It's a lie. This is a lie because this is a picture of what feminism looks like, okay? Something, we, we are all created to be, um, we are created for companionship, Okay? We are not created to be alone. God even said it. It is not good for a man to be alone. So hence he ended up creating, um, you know, creating Eve. There is a reason why. Okay. So she is out here pretending like, okay, you know, we're just going to make these children so they can fulfill that. A child is not going to fulfill that whole. Okay. Because there's something that's missing in you that you, you seek that companionship. Right. But you're trying to get that through a child. That's not how things work. But you cannot say these things in our culture. It's very unfortunate. Okay. But uh, here we are. This lady, uh, the fact that she actually had that montage, right? Like she's saying these things like it's okay. It is not okay. Okay. So unfortunately, to be honest with you, this issue has also seeped into uh, even in our churches today where... Uh, IVF is looked upon, you know, it's just another, it's just another way of people, how people, they have babies. Okay. But what they don't tell you is the things that a woman has to go through in order for them to get that baby. You can, I mean, like it's very, very questionable ethics. Okay. So obviously if she's, she right now, right now she's pregnant. So she ended up doing the IVF, right? That's, those are the things that she has done. So we, you know, we're going to look at her story and then we're going to go, uh, you know, we're going to talk about this uh, even more. But let's uh, look to what she put out, okay? And this is in, on the front page of People magazine. Okay, fine. It's a secular magazine. They, they can do whatever else they want to do, okay? There's no... It's, we shouldn't be surprised about those things. But to me, the issue that I have, she's a black woman, black beautiful woman. She's making this like as the norm and encouraging other people who look up to her that, you know what? It's fine. Just go out there, climb your corporate rider. Whenever you're ready, you can, you know, freeze your eggs uh, and just go get uh, uh, for donation. Um, It's very troubling. Okay, so let's look at what uh, everything, how everything has went down, okay? How things have gone down. All right. This is uh, Ebony, okay? And, And here she is, okay? I mean, these are the pictures that are out there, guys, so... There's nothing I could have done. This is this is the picture that she put out. Okay, so this says uh, Ebony K. Williams is getting ready for a new reality. People can exclusively review that Real Housewives of New York City equal justice with Judge Ebony K. Williams uh, for a pregnant with her first baby, a girl due August 16. The happy news comes two years after Williams reveals she was using her frozen eggs to pursue motherhood via sperm donation and an in vitro fertilization. Okay? I want you guys to note the key word. Okay? Two, two years ago. So this woman embarked on this journey purposefully and intentionally. Okay? Anybody who's gone through IVF or attempt IVF tells you so many things have to go right for the final results of this journey to be a baby. William says, and I quote, that's why I've called this my remarkable miracle. Because it really does feel like I've been the recipient of some very unanimous favor from God above. Okay. Williams also says she nicknamed her daughter one, one of one. Okay. But... Yeah, we, we're just not going to go through all, all, uh, all that article. But I just wanted you guys to get the feel, okay, to see where this woman is coming from. So for two years, okay, prior to us having all this issue, right, so she was doing this deliberate intention. Why didn't she uh, have some attitude adjustment two years ago and see if she could meet a husband and meet a man? No. These women, they have arrived. They don't need a man. But so if you don't need a man, what are you doing with the, uh, with the seed of a man with you? You see what I'm saying? So they want to pretend that they don't need a man, but technically they do. But they're so prideful because they've been poisoned by, by feminism. 
This is exactly what's happening. Now, the child and everything, the baby is innocent, okay? The baby is innocent. Children are gift from the Lord. But she is responsible, the thing that she is doing. So we simply cannot just sweep it under the rugs because children are a gift from God, right? And the means that she's using, remember, God is the God who ordains the means as well as the end. So if you compromise on the means of the things that you get, God is not pleased with that issue. Just because what comes out of it, like it's good, it's not. The end doesn't justify the means, biblically speaking. That's why we said, oh, she had a child out of wedlock. Why do we say that? Because we understand like, no, you're not supposed to be having kids outside uh, outside the marriage, right? You're supposed to be having kids inside the marriage and things will happen. That does not excuse how God has designed things, okay? She thinks what she's doing is actually a good thing, okay? So she went on, um, let's go to her IG page, okay? They're celebrating this thing, okay? So watch this, guys. All right, so this is uh, Ebony Williams herself right here, okay? This is her IG page. This is the picture that I've shown you guys. So I'm going to click over here so you can see uh, how she's celebrating this, okay? And I quote, Abundantly blessed and so excited to welcome my daughter to this world. And he quote, Psalm 37, 4, He will give you the desires of your heart, Okay? We're going to get to that scripture. Now, who do we have over here? People congratulating her. Okay. Rovet, I don't know who this guy is, but I'm interested with this lady right here. Tezrin Figaro. Okay. Uh, let's read what she put out. Let me chime in to help out some of the unsolicited advice to the comments at Ebon K. Williams. Decided to tell the world when she was ready because she decides. She decides what is best for her. Not complete strangers in the comments. If you follow her work, you will notice a pattern of Ebony K. Williams consistently living by her own rules. Guys, she decides. Okay? And Ebony is living by her own rules. Okay? And... Not yours, bottom line. This child is coming into this world and she will be raised with love. And Miss Williams made her decision without the opinion of others. On a personal note, I love this for me because I can't wait to spoil her. So, uh, Tezrin Figaro, okay, another w raging feminist woman, okay. And she's clapping for, for, for Williams over here. And they say, like, okay, the people who are saying this, that, and the third, uh, it's not of their business. Basically, this is what they're saying, okay? So this woman, she says that she decides. She wants to live by her own rules. No, no, that's not how things work. You live in God's world, so you live by God's rules. If you decide to forego those rules, that does not mean that you're not going to be accountable. You are absolutely accountable. And then she has the audacity to quote the scriptures. So, yeah. So we're going to take her to the scriptures because that's what she wants to refer us, Right? It's the, uh, it's, it's the scriptures. All right, so let's take a look at the scriptures that she put out here, okay? Psalm 37, 4. And she actually says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. This lady would have us to believe that God... <laughs> Did you see? You guys... <laughs> I want, to see, I want you guys to see something, what she has done, okay? The scripture says, delight yourself in the Lord. All right. So we're going to go back to her, uh, to her page over here, okay? We're not playing these games. Not out here, y'all. Not out here, okay? So this is Ebony Williams, okay? Did you see what she's done over here? I don't know if you guys are able to see. She just quoted, he will give you the desires of your heart. Ebony, why are you cutting the scripture? Can somebody help me out here? Why is she just telling us part of the scripture? Do you know who else did this? I'll show you. So we have over here, this is, this is what took place in the Garden of Eve, okay? In the Garden of Eden, Eve. And this is scripture over here, Genesis 3, okay? And I quote, uh, Genesis 3, 1. He said to the woman, did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden. Okay? This is the devil 
asking Eve, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And now, this is where it comes from, okay? Feminism, the birthplace of feminism, right here, guys. And the woman said to the serpent, quote, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. <laughs> guys, do you see what's happening over here? So not only did Eve add on, says you shall not touch it. That's not what God said. Okay. And in fact, God already told that to Adam. That was before Eve came on the scene. Okay. So Adam uh, conveyed the message to the wife as it should be. But be that as it may. Ebony Williams just quoted the scripture. He will give you the desires of your heart. All right. So right now, I desire, I don't know, I desire a Limborghini. Where is my Limborghini? Because that's what I desire. That's what's my desire of my heart. Okay? <laughs> I desire to be in Florida right now, Miami, South Beach. But that's not where I'm at. So, but she is misquoting the scripture over here to suit her narrative, to fit whatever else that she's doing. The scripture says you have to put God first. Okay? You have to delight yourself in the Lord. So, how are you delighting yourself in the Lord when you're out here for going, bypassing what God has designed to raise children in a home, to raise children with a father. If a father is absent for whatever the reason, things happen, right? But this woman, she has intentionally chosen to eliminate the father of that child, okay? So on purpose, and she, she planned this two years ago. And now she wants to tell us that, okay, just, you know, God is just going to give you the desires of your that, That's not how it works. And that's not what that, that scripture means. Okay. You need to be walking in the Lord. You need to be putting God first. And God is the one who's going to give you the things. So there are things that you desire. You think those things are good that, that they are not actually. Okay. So it's what it's uh, according to your will, God. Let it be done according to your will. God's will, God's desire for your life might be for you not to have children. Are you willing to, to delight in the Lord in that? God's desire might be for you not to be married. Are you willing to be uh, content in that? You see what I'm saying? So this idea of this prosperity, uh, looking at the scriptures, you're only just desiring material things, the things that you like, the things that are good. No, 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 no. All who desire to live godly lives will be persecuted. That's what the scripture teaches. Huh? Those are the things that God desires and it has been gifted to you, not only to face all these trials and tribulations, right? That's how it works, okay? The narrow road. So this is what we are having uh, with uh, uh, Ebony Williams here. But my point is, just because people walk out with the baby because they did the process of IVF, there are things that go on behind the scenes that are just uh, people just don't know about. Okay, people just don't know about it. And then let alone, if somebody is a professing Christians, I, I just don't see how you can defend that biblically speaking. Because once an egg is fed rice, that's, that's an embryo right there. That's life. That is life. So unless you tell me like, okay, you're going to go back for all your babies, that's fine. But the, the means that you had to use to even do that process Ethically, in my opinion, it's very, very, very questionable. Okay? It's very, very questionable. So these are the things, right? Like, okay, you know, just because you... It's the same thing. Like, okay, people desire to get married, but you're a believer. Okay? It's a good thing to desire marriage, right? And they're just going to go out there and get married to what? To, to a homeboy. But a homeboy is not a believer. Okay? Homeboy is out here playing games the whole nine yards. Now you are, in, you are married. You're having issues. Oh, but, uh, you know, marriage is good. Yes, marriage is good, but... Does it mean that you have to do these steps in order for you to, to be in this situation? So these are the things that, um, that I do see. But, you know, this is the world that we live in. Uh, you know, like it's, you know, people, as they say, you know, your body, your choice, right? Women have arrived. They're doing whatever else they're doing. But, like, you know, we still have to do things in the way that is God-honoring. So, but all in all, Ebony, she's pregnant, she's having a baby. We hope all the best for that baby. We pray for that baby that, you know, she'll be raised up well. And the Lord will have uh, mercy and save that child uh, into his kingdom, into his kingdom. 
All right, guys, that is all that I had for you guys today. I hope you find this to be informative to you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and X. Until next time, remember to be in the know. Thank you.